Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Persley, a professor of animal science at Michigan State University. I specialize in practical ways to improve fertility of lactating dairy cows. This morning, we're at Nobis Dairy Farm at St. John's, Michigan, a farm that utilizes our research to improve the fertility of their cows and the profit of their farm. The fertility programs that Nobis Dairy utilizes are all based on research that deals with how follicles and CL grow during the estrus cycle. Later, we'll talk about the fertility programs, but right now we're going to talk about how follicles and CL grow during the estrus cycle to give you an idea how GnRH and prostaglandin F2 alpha can be utilized during certain periods of the estrus cycle. On day zero of the estrus cycle, when a cow is in standing estrus, there is generally one large preovulatory follicle, sometimes multiple follicles in older cows, that are secreting estradiol. Of course, there is no corpus luteum producing progesterone at this time, but sometimes with ultrasound you can detect the old CL, the corpus albicans. There can be a few other smaller follicles, and likely the atretic follicle from the first follicular wave can be detected with ultrasound on this day. The high estradiol and low progesterone allow for a surge of luteinizing hormone, LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, from the anterior pituitary gland. The LH surge initiates the process of ovulation, and the FSH increase initiates a new follicular wave. From the onset of the LH surge to ovulation takes approximately 28 hours. As you can see, a wave of new growing follicles appear following the surge of FSH from the previous day. FSH remains elevated on this day due to a lack of inhibition that would eventually come from inhibin and estrogen from the growing follicles feeding back primarily on the anterior pituitary. On day two, several of the new growing follicles continue to grow on this day as FSH remains elevated, but slowly decreasing due to a small negative feedback of inhibin and estrogen. Many of the new follicles from the new wave have become atretic and are no longer detectable using ultrasound. The new corpus luteum continues to develop and grow in size and is secreting progesterone. Approximately 60 to 70 percent of new CL in lactating dairy cows develop fluid-filled cavities. The largest follicle of the new growing cohort of follicles will likely become the dominant follicle. On day three, most of the follicles of the new follicular wave are now tretic and many are no longer detectable using ultrasound. There is now a cohort of approximately four to six follicles that are functional growing follicles. The CL continues to grow on this day. If the largest follicle was ablated or aspirated on this day, the largest subordinate follicle would likely become the new dominant follicle. Inhibitant estrogen from the growing follicles are driving down the secretion of FSH from the anterior pituitary, but FSH still remains above basal levels on this day. Day four is generally the first day following the new follicular wave that the largest follicle may deviate from the next largest follicle. On this day, approximately 50% of lactating dairy cows undergo this deviation event. The deviation event is characterized by the largest follicle acquiring greater numbers of LH receptors on the granulosa cells and continuing to grow as the subordinate follicles stop growing and undergo atresia. Cows that have undergone this deviation event now have follicles that can respond to an exogenous GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate. This would not induce a new cycle. It would result in an accessory CL and the start of a new follicular wave since the inhibitory effects of FSH are removed. If a deviated follicle, now the dominant follicle, is ablated or aspirated, a new follicular wave would begin once again due to the removal of the follicle's inhibitory effects on FSH. On day 5, approximately 70% of lactating dairy cows now have undergone the deviation process. These deviated dominant follicles can respond to an exogenously administered GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate. All the other follicles that may be detected by ultrasound on this day are atretic. Most CL of dairy cows on day five of the ester cycle will not respond to PGF2-alpha with complete CL regression. By day six of the ester cycle, nearly all cows have undergone the deviation event. Thus, nearly all cows would have a dominant follicle that will respond to an exogenously administered GnRH-induced LH surge. 
The only functional dominant follicle or follicles in the ovaries at this time is the dominant follicle. Many cows may have a CL that may be responsive to PGF2-alpha on this day, but to induce luteolysis in most cows on day 6, two injections of PGF2-alpha 24 hours apart are likely needed. On day 7 of the estrus cycle, the only follicle that is functional and growing is the dominant follicle. And until this follicle undergoes atresia, it should ovulate following a GnRH-induced LH surge. In this particular cow, there is one growing dominant follicle that is 14 millimeters in diameter. The CL continues to grow and secrete progesterone. Most cows on this day will have complete CL regression in response to a single PGF2-alpha. A greater response is still possible with two injections of PGF2-alpha 24 hours apart. On day 8 of the estrus cycle, the first wave dominant follicle in most cows is still functional. The dominant follicle should respond to a GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate. Although the percentage of cows that respond begins to diminish this day due to some cows already having a first wave dominant follicle that has become atretic. In this case, there is still one growing dominant follicle that is now 15 millimeters in diameter. Dominant follicles in three-wave cows may begin to become atretic by this day. If this happens, a new second wave will be initiated. The CL will continue to grow and secrete progesterone until the day of natural luteolysis, which is about day 18 of the estrus cycle. Most cows should have complete CL regression in response to PGF2-alpha, from now until the end of the estrus cycle, when endogenous pulses of PGF2-alpha are secreted from the uterine endometrium and regress the CL naturally. On day 9 of the estrus cycle, more cows will have a first wave dominant follicle that will become atretic. In fact, the first wave dominant follicle of lactating dairy cows generally becomes atretic between day 8 and day 13 of the cycle. When atresia happens, a new follicular wave will be initiated and a new wave will begin to grow. In this particular cow, the dominant follicle is still functional and is about 15.5 millimeters in size. Theoretically, this follicle should respond to a GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate if it is still functional. Yet some data indicate that as progesterone increases, the chances of attenuating the amplitude of the GnRH-induced LH surge becomes greater, thus the possibility of having no ovulation to a GnRH-induced LH surge. In this particular cow on day 10 of the estrus cycle, the dominant follicle will become atretic on this day, just as an example, as evidenced by the appearance of a second follicular wave the next day, day 11. Cows that have a first wave dominant follicle remaining functional on this day may respond to a GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate. In this case, the first wave dominant follicle has grown to maximal size of 16 millimeters in diameter. As mentioned previously, the CL will continue to grow and secrete progesterone during this period. On day 11 of the estrus cycle of this particular cow, atresia of the dominant follicle occurred the previous day and allowed for an increase in FSH. This allowed for a second wave of new follicles that began to grow in response to the increase in FSH from the previous day. FSH remains elevated on this day due to a lack of inhibition that will eventually come from inhibiting estrogen that will be produced from the eventual new dominant follicle. On day 12 in this particular cow, as in the first follicular wave, several of the follicles of the second wave now continue to grow as FSH is still elevated but slowly decreasing. Many of the new follicles from the second wave have become atretic and are no longer detectable using ultrasound. The largest follicle of the new cohort of growing follicles will most likely become the dominant follicle, as was in the case of the first follicular wave. However, the largest follicle detectable with ultrasound on this day, in this case, is the atretic first wave dominant follicle, still about 15 millimeters in diameter. In this example, a GnRH-induced LH surge will not cause ovulation of any of the follicles. The new dominant follicle of the second wave has not yet deviated in growth from the subordinate follicles, thus it does not have sufficient LH receptors in granulosa cells to respond to an LH surge. The atretic first wave follicle is no longer functional and, of course, will not respond to a GnRH-induced LH surge. Most of the follicles from the second follicular wave are now atretic on day 13 and many are no longer detectable with ultrasound. There is now a cohort of approximately four to six follicles that are now growing functional follicles. If the largest follicle from this cohort is ablated or aspirated, the largest subordinate would likely continue to grow and become the dominant follicle. Inhibin and estrogen from the growing follicles are inhibiting the secretion of FSH from the anterior pituitary 
but FSH still remains above basal levels on this day. The largest follicle detectable with ultrasound on this day continues to be the first wave dominant follicle that's now atretic. In this example on day 14, the largest follicle of the new second follicular wave has now deviated from the next largest follicle. Approximately 50% of lactating cows undergo this deviation event by day 4 of the new follicular wave. The deviation event is characterized by the largest follicle acquiring greater numbers of LH receptors and continuing to grow as the subordinate follicles stop growing and undergo atresia. Cows that have undergone this deviation event now have follicles that can respond to an exogenous generation-induced LH surge and ovulate. This would not induce a new cycle, however, it would result in an accessory CL and the start of a new follicular wave since the inhibitory effects of FSH are removed following ovulation. If the deviated follicle, now the dominant follicle, is ablated or aspirated, a new follicular wave would begin once again due to the removal of the follicle's inhibitory effects on FSH. In this example, on day 15 of the estrus cycle, the new dominant follicle continues to grow and can respond to a GnRH-induced LH surge and ovulate until the initiation of estrus on day 21 or day 22. The cavity that formed in the newly growing CL on day 2 of the cycle has slowly decreased in size and is now no longer detectable with ultrasound. A very small percentage of cows that form cavities in the CL may maintain those cavities until about 32 days in gestation. Nevertheless, cavities in the CL are a good indicator of cows that are in early to mid estrus cycle. On day 16 of the estrus cycle, in this example, the dominant follicle of the second wave is still growing and is functional, and the corpus luteum is still growing and functional and secreting progesterone. Concentrations of progesterone and circulation of lactating dairy cows in mid to late stages of the estrus cycle prior to luteolysis average about 3.5 nanograms per mil. This is about one half of the amount of progesterone when these cows were nulliparous heifers. Yet the size of the functional CL in cows is larger than that of heifers. An explanation of this phenomenon likely lies in the difference in metabolism of progesterone in the liver between cows and heifers. Rate of blood flow from lactating dairy cows are more than double to that of the same size cow but not lactating. In this particular example on day 17, the second wave dominant follicle is still functional and growing. It is possible that by day 17, the second wave dominant follicle could become atretic. If that happens, a third follicular wave would form, and the dominant follicle that grows from the third follicular wave would be the ovulatory follicle. In this example, the second wave dominant follicle will remain functional and become the ovulatory follicle. Generally on day 18 of the cycle, cows begin natural luteolysis of the corpus luteum. Once again, if the dominant follicle is functional on this day, it will continue to grow and secrete estradiol in response to an increase in pulsatility of LH due to the decrease in progesterone. Progesterone controls the pulsatile release of GnRH at the hypothalamic level. Pulses of GnRH travel through the portal vessel to the anterior pituitary to induce pulses of LH. On this day, as progesterone decreases, pulses of GnRH increase. In this example, on day 19 of the estrus cycle, pulses of LH are driving the growth and secretion of estradiol from the dominant follicle. Inhibiting estradiol from granulosa cells of the dominant follicle are controlling FSH concentrations and thus no new follicles are growing. The CL is nearly regressed and concentrations of progesterone are nearing basal levels. In this example, on day 20, the CL is completely regressed and the concentrations of progesterone are now at basal levels. The preovulatory dominant follicle is secreting large amounts of estradiol, but due to the increased metabolism of steroids in the lactating dairy cow, concentrations of estradiol are about half that of when these cows were heifers. 21 or 22 days after the previous estrus, the lactating dairy cow is now in estrus again. Estradiol from the dominant follicle, now the preovulatory follicle, will cause a surge of luteinizing hormone that will cause ovulation approximately 28 hours later. The LH surge and the onset of standing estrus are generally considered to be coincidental. Recent data would indicate that a significant percent of dairy cows now have an estrus cycle greater than 21 days.